not a day goes by that we don't hear some sort of urban legend or myth about a medical procedure. Charlie, what are the common myths about laser vision correction? Not a day goes by in my practice that I don't have someone come in and give me one of what I call Dave Letterman's top 10 reasons not to have laser vision correction. But the most common one is your eyes are still changing. As a comprehensive ophthalmologist that also practices as a refractive surgeon, patients are coming in for glasses and contact lenses, and I'll frequently ask them if they've ever thought about LASIK surgery, and it's amazing how common it is that they can come up and say, I've been told I'm not a candidate for laser refractive surgery. And Charlie, when patients come to you, what's one or two of the most common things that you hear where they've been told they can't have LASIK, but right. that's not, that's inaccurate? Yeah, the, the uh, probably the most common is that your eyes are still changing, and actually when we did the original FDA trials, we allowed a certain amount of change in the test from non-dilated to dilated, and from previous two years refraction, uh, for that to be a parameter. And so the fact that your eyes may change a little bit doesn't change the fact that the laser treatment isn't permanent. So you hear things like, you can't fly, you can't scuba dive, or you can't swim, those are all myths. You've got to wear readers later, your cornea is too thin, your cornea is too thick, you've got astigmatism, all kinds of different uh, myths, as you say. Jeff, what, what kind of places can a patient turn to to get the most accurate information about laser vision correction? Well, I think first and foremost, they really need to see somebody who practices comprehensive refractive surgery. So if you go to somebody that is in the business of selling glasses or contact lenses and they don't offer refractive surgery, they may not be motivated to push you in that direction. I think uh, education is, is key and when patients come into our practice, we'll run some diagnostic studies and tell them whether they're interested or not if they are a candidate and at least it gets them thinking about it. And Jeff, you mentioned education. I know that's really one of the missions of the RSA, the Refractive Surgery Alliance, to really educate patients properly on, on these type of topics. Yeah, not all patients are good candidates for laser refractive surgery, but 95% of the population is. I think it's our job to educate the patients and let them know about the, the benefits uh, of laser refractive surgery. To that same point, um, a lot of patients have legitimately been told that they're not candidates, but that's based on old technology. As uh, refractive surgery has progressed from technology and our experience, and after doing millions of treatments, uh, the indications have really widened. Yeah, that's great information. If you're a patient out there that's interested in LASIK or laser vision correction, make sure you go to the right source to get the right information to pick the best surgeon and procedure for you.